happens is there is going to be one very interesting there is going to be one interesting case that is going to be presented by one of among us and then after that we are going to it is going to be followed by one introduction by me just to give the background so that the discussion can go forward this is going to be followed by a panel discussion where the questions that are going to be raised by the clinician presenting are uh, there is going to be an attempt to um, answer those questions okay and the format is that without the fear of being judged we we openly discuss thoughts so that is how we actually so it is not about showing off knowledge it is not about anything it is a, a, a open discussion of thoughts so that all the problems that we are facing every day we actually uh, discuss it so that we can help the patient and one another so we are we have uh, dr ravi rajan today presenting the uh, case this is going to be uh, a patient of post sleep uh, pulsive fall okay yes it it's a nice video case uh, presentation dr ravi rajan has uh, completed his uh, mbbs from rajamuthaiya medical college uh, chidambaram uh, he did his uh, dlo and uh, dnb from uh, dlo from madras medical college uh, chennai and dnb from kkr ent research institute his uh, current uh, designation is as a consultant ent surgeon at uh, kkr ent hospital and research institute his uh, area of interest include neurotology rhinology skull base surgery he has many awards so he is a very young uh, practitioner has already he has a lot of awards to his uh, credit he won the gold medal at the state level uh, post graduate medical exam held at the madras medical college won the best paper award in ay the in, in 2014 chennai ay then uh, the third place in temporal bone dissection competition at isocon uh, mysore in 2018 so this is about uh, dr ravi rajan we have uh, two eminent uh, panelists uh, one uh, is uh, dr sridam who, who all of us in the vertigo circles know very well for his immense uh, knowledge and his uh, mathematical approach uh, to uh, vestibular uh, evaluation okay. so he is a surgeon with extensive training in neurotology dr uh, sridam specializes in the management of vertigo and complex balance disorders he is the state's first consultant neurotologist and heads the aster uh, balance clinic at aster medicity kochi which is one of uh, its kind facility in the region the uniqueness of aster uh, balance clinic is it's a 24 bar 7 exclusive outpatient clinic for managing the whole spectrum of dizziness and other complex balance disorders it's the first in kerala presently manages the largest vertigo and dizziness patient volume in kerala we introduced uh, integrated neurotology practice first in south india where neurotology op is linked to multiple departments like neurology psychiatry cardiology internal medicine emergency medicine and ophthalmology uh, provides individualized vestibular rehabilitation program and that is again the first in south india okay his qualification is for, is an msc ent from government medical college tiruvananthapuram he did his mbbs from government medical college calicut he played a key role in establishment of the first vertigo clinic at the government medical college in the state and established neurotology department with exclusive outpatient clinic at aster medicity kochi it's the first of its kind in the state published articles in peer reviewed journals one gold medal for best consultant paper in 2016 and is a founder member of the kochi neurolo neurotology society which is doing tremendous work okay lot of people from kochi i know they do excellent work we also have dr uh, vishwanath bellad he is a pulmonologist and sleep medicine specialist okay i am not sure whether he has joined okay some issue i think he is. so far is not been able to join we we'll try to get in touch with him okay so he is a uh, work in pgs clinical so hospital here in uh, bangalore he did his uh, mbbs from jnmc belgam which is my alma mater too for, for my post graduation okay and uh, then he did his uh, dnb in respiratory diseases from lokma lokmanya tilak uh, municipal medical college okay uh, then uh, uh, tuberculosis diseases diploma from college of physicians and uh, surgeons okay then uh, he has a post graduate certificate in health management from uh, national institute of health and uh, family welfare uh, uh, new delhi he is he is working presently as the consultant pulmonologist and intensivist and also the consultant as a sleep medicine at bgs clinicals global hospital bangalore so with uh, these uh, eminent uh, panelists and our uh, ravi rajan 
let us now start off i'll hand over the floor to ravi rajan to make the presentation first dr ravi rajan to you good evening one and all good evening sir first of all i would like to thank uh, srinivas sir for having me here for this uh, wonderful uh, interactive case presentation uh, so i'll start off sir absolutely please go ahead please go ahead you can start sharing yes sir so yeah so today my topic is a very interesting topic it's about uh, a patient who had a, a sudden fall slash drop attack after uh, she got up from bed not immediately though uh, so i've termed it post sleep pulsive falls so the the patient is a 61 year old female with no known comorbidities the complaint was two episodes of sudden falls slash drop attacks there was no loss of consciousness the patient was completely arousable after the fall and both episodes followed a brief period in supine position in the bed and uh, to note that it was not immediately after getting up from the bed the patient told me that it was around 5 to 6 minutes after she got up from the bed and then she had this fall and in between these episodes and post the last episode the patient is absolutely normal no no vertiginous symptoms no vertiginous episodes no syncopal attacks no other specific complaints also so after the first uh, fall she went to a cardiologist who did an ecg the ecg turned out to be normal they also did a carotid doppler that also was normal so the, she then was referred to a neurologist the neurologist did an eeg which was within normal limits and an mri brain which was otherwise normal but uh, there was one finding that was striking was a type 3 anteroinferior cerebellar artery loops on both this in both the cp angles then the patient came in, came to us for uh, her consultation the audiometry was normal the vng was unremarkable except for a saccadic smooth pursuit it was only after this the patient's attender sent uh, I mean showed me this video uh, luckily they had installed a cctv in, in their home so uh, the cctv caught one of the episodes live so here i am so you can see the patient is actually instructing some uh, so to some people there and then she has a sudden fall all of a sudden all out of blue and then she was completely arousable after the fall she, they 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 completely denied any lose, losing consciousness i'll just play it once again maybe you can make it full screen and play sir you can go to presentation view yes sir you want me to play from my side i uh, yes yeah, yeah, sir i mean i think it's better to play from your side i think yeah some yeah. issue with the no problem can Having you see here. can you see the video screen ah uh, yes sir yes sir okay so i will play it now this is what you had shared with me i can play replay that again could you see clearly uh there is a little bit of a pause sir but it's all right sir now yeah it's it's clear it's it's sort of i can play one more time what is that if because of net issues if somebody is not able to dr shriram can you see sir yeah no 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 you can see okay yeah i can i can play it again yeah 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 so she is standing outside yeah Just yeah pointing so giving some instructions whatever instructions. and that's it immediately that now okay okay yeah it as if uh, my description probably will go to she was thrown down yes uh, yeah. uh, dr avirajan you can go back to you uh, sh- uh, sharing and asking your questions yes sir so my question to the panelists would be uh what would be the basic approach first of all what would be an approach to a patient who walks into a clinic like this with all the cardiac workup done with the neuro workup done 
both of it being normal and uh, the ent workup in the in, uh, in between the episodes it's perfectly normal uh, how will you approach this patient sir yeah sir i think we lost your audio sir can you we hear me lost sir? your audio yeah yeah now we can hear you yeah yes sir so my question to the panelists would be mm-hmm. how would you approach this patient who mm-hmm. who was seen who was seen by a cardiologist for this fall and has been cleared mm-hmm. who was seen by a neurologist and has been cleared and the patient mm-hmm. has come to an ent surgeon with this video mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. the, i mean uh, no other complaints no other complaints in between the episodes of fall two falls in fact mm-hmm. how do you approach okay and then other questions are what are the appropriate what are, what are the appropriate investigations do you do in 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 this in this case and basically what is what is the diagnosis would you term it a central cause or a vestibular cause I mean although knowing that she didn't lose consciousness but is there any other central cause there which can cause a fall without losing consciousness or is it a cataplexy associated with narcolepsy or is it a seizure Uh, atonic seizure maybe or is it just a migraine with weakness is there any previous tas the patient didn't have any previous tas but then if the patient had previous tas is it a significant history and what, i mean basically what what are the causes of lack of postural tone i think the lack of postural tone was the cause of the fall so i just want to know what are the causes of the lack of postural tone yes sir so i think uh, it's, it's a it's a nice case uh, to discuss yes. you have one more slide yes sir no no that's all sir that's all okay so before we proceed with the panelists what i will do, generally the format of this is to so that all of us can participate in the discussion um, I, i do some amount of uh, background uh, presentations and then followed up with we'll take the presentation so uh, i will go, go ahead and uh, share my screen okay Or everyone to mute your mic. Yeah, can you see the uh, screen? Hello. Can you see my yeah, screen? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I put up a few slides so, so that we can actually start off. Uh, Abhishek, you can un un you can mute everybody from your side. and then uh, whoever requires we can unmute because some people by mistake they would have uh, unmuted fine so uh, whoever needs to talk you can unmute uh, yourself okay i think dr shriram you can do that dr uh, uh, ravi rajan you can do that see falls uh, with uh, retained consciousness what are all the differential diagnosis that we should keep thinking of this is one thing that has been of a personal interest to me so my list goes on uh, becoming bigger and bigger so cataplexy is one cause okay vestibular falls in within vestibular falls when i say vestibular falls this forceful falls when there is a pulsion when there is a uh, this thing when the description tells that there has been a force okay then i label them as vestibular falls they can be migraine bppv related vestibular paroxysmia and tumor kin sotolithic crisis which is related to the mini rs disease then there are other people with falls with retained consciousness these are gait disorders okay what exactly happens is in response to trivial postural challenges they fall okay there are like in a normal person if you suddenly call them from one side they would not uh, fall if suddenly something a dog comes and they would not fall whereas this person tries to avoid a small thing a kid starts running and they try to hold then they fall so trivial postural challenges which does not lead to a fall in a normal person a person with a gait disorder will end up falling then there are environmental causes like slippery floors carpets are loose this kind of things also can lead to falls there is a uh, there is a wire dangling there and nobody has seen and you entangle then fall <clears throat> then there are other things which are the more interesting part are probably more common than any of the other things the which are like the what has been called as a cryptogenic fall where no cause has been found in spite of extensive evaluation probably lot of these things will start getting new names now a, lot, a paper many many years ago more than 30 40 years ago cause uh, gave a name called uh, cryptogenic falls to falls where no other cause could be found out maybe 
there is a condition now there, there there is a new paper telling most of these can be actually part of a functional neurological disorder including when patients have actually fallen and fractured their feet okay so there is a, when they see the contextual thing the psychological stressors that they are going through when these fall up attacks happen it, they have, they have come up with a theory that possibly that uh, all these are actually for part of a functional neurological disorder then uh, in the literature we see retained consciousness falls in case of third ventricle colloid cyst or any cyst like that this is third ventricle cyst third ventricle masses as a cause for falls has been reported multiple number of times then uh, hamartomas of the hypothalamus again has been known to cause falls but there do we really want to call it as retained consciousness is a question because they may okay because uh, if there are episodes where they happen uh, they look to be aware they seem aware uh, but to a bystander but then they don't have memory for that particular event so what do you call it whether retained consciousness or not is is something that you no know, we need to see now drop attacks with light headedness okay drop attacks with loss of consciousness is quite easy the, but drop attacks with light headedness also can be caused by these kind of episodes like in arrhythmias okay if there is a complete loss of consciousness you know you you will put it under a category of fall with loc so the moment you have fall with loc these are the differential diagnosis but then these can be the differential diagnosis even when there has not been a loc when there is only been a pre syncopal stage uh, kind of light headedness where it can be because of arrhythmia aortic stenosis orthostatic hypotension neurally mediated syncope subclavian steel even syncopal migraine now what are the things that we need to do for a person the evaluation of drop attacks with light headedness history and physical examination ecg with a rhythm strip echocardiography that will also take care of iot uh, to, to certain extent the aortic status tilt table test and carotid sinus massage under ecg guidance these are things that we can be actually doing to evaluate these patients now coming to within this i am going back in the slides falls with retained consciousness this becomes a huge there are both of them are huge uh, workloads and then they become challenges but with a structured approach we can reach a conclusion in a lot of time in a lot of sometimes it just takes two steps of questioning is the consciousness preserved if the consciousness was preserved was there a force was there a atony based on that you can actually reach a, uh, a conclusion and that is the what we have been practicing so for example falls with retained consciousness if somebody has complete retained consciousness the after that next question is how do you describe that fall if somebody tells oh that seemed to be like muscles just gave way muscles were not listening then probably you will put a diagnosis of as cataplexy okay so like that so uh, that is how you do if there has been force in the fall then you start thinking in terms of vestibular fall there are four differential diagnoses if there is no for if it is more of trivial postural challenges you make a diagnosis of a gait disorder okay but there are situations where there's just like that fall happens and then we need to the problem with the diagnosis of cataplexy when you go through delayed diagnosis in cataplexy is always there is a mind in the mind we think that cataplexy has, uh, should always be associated with narcolepsy it need not be cataplexy need not be associated with narcolepsy there are multiple reports where cataplexy has been seen as an isolated condition tone loss in skeletal muscle with preserved consciousness okay is the, what happens so what do you, what is this tone loss if somebody brings a video and say it it look like the trunk started sl slumping it started giving way the knee started buckling down okay so the head started slumping head and trunk started slumping this is how somebody will describe this and before the clock completes one minute some some people as early as 10 seconds some people up to 60 seconds but by that time the patient is completely normal and after that patient doesn't look disturbed patient look like ah, i have been going through this again now i am happy that kind of a feature is what is seen and other thing is in these patients amitriptyline is often effective in cataplexy okay but the key way way in which you uh, nowadays what is going to happen is the number of patients who are going to bring the other reason why the dr ravi rajar this presentation is so beautiful is because nowadays there are cctv cameras everywhere and our approach to diagnosing falls would actually be not through computer tomography not through ecg this thing but through the tomography of looking through the cctv video so that is what is going to happen so we need to understand patterns of falls to get to know what exactly is the possible diagnosis now the differential diagnosis of cataplexy itself 
now till now cataplexy itself was a diagnosis now as we start seeing more and more patients we think it is cataplexy but then it is not cataplexy then when the cataplexy itself is the diagnosis we have reached to do that stage then we need to also consider other differential diagnosis there are differential diagnosis like elastic seizures these are patients who have especially seen in hamartomas of the hypothalamus where the patient has laughing bouts and then during that bout they may actually fall off but if you ask the person why did you laugh they will tell did i laugh i am not even aware because they are amnestic to that particular uh, episode so these kind of thing and again elastic atonic seizures where they just laugh they, they just fall okay simply no, non elastic just just atonic seizures okay so if if you if if they are not even aware of that fall then it is something like a seizure okay because okay. then of course there can be drop attacks due to brain stem ischemia okay then pseudo cataplexy it's more of a psycho psychological condition where till people as young as very small kids like 7 8 year old kids onwards they start developing sudden falls okay but most of the falls are to negative symptoms rather than positive okay instead of uh, after laughing they have a fall after a crying episode something like that one thing maybe it is a little longer than the usual cataplexy cataplexy there is an attempt to get up and they will immediately get up whereas here in there may not even be an attempt to get up and then you try to do a deep tendon reflexes you may actually elicit a deep tendon reflex to your surprise whereas that may not be possible but cataplexy is so short at that time there is not an opportunity to elicit whereas in a pseudo uh, cataplexy you may have an opportunity to elicit a deep tendon reflex then of course we have the psychogenic uh, non epileptic uh, seizure which we need to recognize increasingly these things are what we are started seeing in in the practice now okay we started seeing psychogenic non epileptic seizures as a cause for their falls uh in, in, even when the person has actually fallen and injured themselves to the extent of have, actually having had a had a head trauma actually having had a this thing where everything else turns out to be normal okay so this is uh, something that we need to keep in mind but unlike in cataplexy not all of these things are like okay the one thing in cataplexy is that there is a loss of muscle tone clear cut loss of muscle tone patient is aware you can through the behavior of the patient you know that patient is aware what is happening patient is trying to get up all those things which may not be seen in the other condition okay so when there is a now what exactly is in cataplexy okay in cataplexy what exactly is happening is there is a sudden loss of muscle tone probably it is rem sleep okay during the rem phase of our sleep the, the skeletal muscles go into during the rem phase of our sleep the the, the skeletal muscles go into a relaxation that is like this is a dream dream like dream state of us maybe it is a, uh, a it's 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 the protective mechanism to probably stop us from acting out our dreams or whatever you want to call it possibly that okay now if some, that kind of a muscle inactivation that hap has happens during wakefulness then poss possibly that is what is causing cataplectic falls okay so now when there is a condition that causes loss of tone as as related to sleep disorders can there also be a condition in which there is increased tone okay and maybe see generally what happens is there is a certain amount of certain things that happen on wakefulness on immediately on getting up okay the muscles strengthen so there is there are some kinds of sleep disorders where this is jittery it leads to jit, uh, jerks okay hypno hypnic jerks or hypnagogic as the we get this kind of jerks okay where this kind of a thing where the muscles gaining tone or leaving or losing the tone before falling asleep is not happening correctly so there is something this so these kind of things where muscle tone is altered can happen around the time of sleep so that is known these kind of things are known okay now as part of narcolepsy we know that people lose tone and then they fall that, that is cataplexy now without catap without narcolepsy also we have seen cat cataplectic conditions okay where there is a loss of tone and people actually fall so it can be a condition in which there is a okay now is there now my question here is should we consider if there is a loss of tone happening as part of a disorder can there also be a increased tone what if the increased tone is to only one side then can it lead to pul a, a pulsive fall so can it be part of a sleep disorder i am asking this question especially because this patient with dr ravindrajan has presented it happens after waking up it is not exactly after getting up okay after get in the sense when you say after getting up from bed it is like even after waking up for half an hour or one hour after waking up if the, after getting up from bed the person will have 
a fall after waking up is the person has woken up at this particular point of time and if they take an option of okay let me just be in the bed for next 15 minutes i know my falls have always been happening within five, after 5 minutes of waking up if i i will just lie down in a wakeful state for 15 minutes then they will not fall so i had a similar patient who has taken this approach she knows that if immediately on on waking up she will have a pulsive fall so she has taken an approach where she is uh, she has decided no i am not going to get up out of bed for 15 minutes after that she gets up there is no problem in case of orthostatic hypotension whenever they get get out of bed is when they will have a problem or after they get out of the bed is when they have a problem whereas this one is not related to actually getting out of bed the act of getting out of bed this is more related to the act of waking up from sleep after some time they are prone to this kind of a problem so what could be the underlying mechanism what can we do about these things is what we will take so now we will start off with i'll ask uh, ravi rajan to again share his uh, slide and uh, put these questions back and uh, we will start attempting to answer the questions i request uh, okay let us uh, okay we have one panelist dr uh, sridham the other uh, panelist who, who was supposed to uh, come i think there is some problem so, uh, so dr vishwanath bellad uh, has not been able to join uh, so far so i request dr ravi rajan to again please put up your slide and put those uh, questions uh, again maybe maybe if it helps i will uh, share the screen again and then uh, show the video again for those people who have just joined late so that we we have a context okay i'll just show the video again can you see the video yes sir yeah after this you can uh, you can share your presentation and the question sir sure sure sir so she is standing there and that's it maybe one more round and then i'll give it to ravi rajan i stop sharing uh, dr ravi rajan you can share and put your see one more thing that this slide uh, this video tells us about our the wrong thing that our people do is they try to hold on to people they stop uh, people from actually f- uh, falling and prob- if at all it was a syncopal attack it this in this case it is clearly not but if at all that is a good thing is to allow the patient to be flat whereas our people try to hold them up okay and causing problems so i think we should increase the awareness in the society also to tell them that when somebody actually falls the thing is not to lift their head up is to lift the feet up <laughs> okay is what we should be telling uh, people unfortunately most of them try to hold the head up and try to stop a fall which is not a good thing to do so with that now dr ravi rajan has put back his questions uh, the approach to this particular patient so dr shriram what do you what will be your approach when you get a patient of this uh, uh, kind to you okay the the video is very clear actually uh, the the video uh, has the most important part of diagnosis okay uh, uh, the thing is that uh, he, he she doesn't make any moves uh, she uh, there is uh, uh, and uh, she uh, means it's not uh, while getting up and down so it's uh, it's like a pulsive just just as you said it's like a just pulsive fall it's like a just a uh, loss of muscle tone it's uh, more uh, it's like a spontaneous so it's like a spontaneous pulse mm-hmm. so uh, yeah. the usually uh, when we, uh, when we, we if, if uh, when we get a situation if we don't have this kind of video we we know that there, there is just a fall then uh, we usually uh, definitely we will evaluate the, the, the all possibilities like uh, so we will also consider the pre syncope syncope uh, evaluation uh, cardiac uh, uh, evaluation uh, cardiac arrhythmia this all uh, has to be done and uh, neurological evaluation uh, definitely has to be done uh, then uh, uh, again uh, the like uh, uh, vestibular causes like uh, the spontaneous uh, uh, this falls uh vestibular paroxysmia uh, it can happen so uh, in la- last year last for last one year we had multiple uh, patients with falls so 
uh, we are the, there are the situations what we have encountered one is definitely vestibular paralysis may can present like this then uh, 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 we are not talking about this video uh, in general uh, so vestibular paroxysm may have presented like this uh, as false uh, and uh, then uh, in the progressive supranuclear palsy uh, they have uh, 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 they have come to the casualty multiple times with uh, history of false and then uh, even in uh, this uh, uh, this uh, normal pressure uh, hydrocephalus nph NPH also uh, can present you with uh, uh, multiple history of faults, uh, dysautonomia. This all can uh, present you. So definitely, we uh, initial first investigation is uh, uh, if if there is loss of consciousness, then definitely uh, we will consider the cardiac evaluation first, and uh, uh, that's the usual approach. Uh, here, it's uh, that's uh, since the video is giving us the maximum clue. Uh, definitely, uh, we should consider this. Uh, this both cataplexy and vestibular paroxysm may are possibilities. Uh, uh, th that's my thought. Okay, so there is a uh, Dr. Raj Shekhar, um, a nursing who is written in the chat that possibly the person was holding on to something on the um, this thing with support, and then something gave way, and then she fell, which is possible. If okay. But then this patient also had a similar fall, I think, in when she was not holding on to anything also. This was the second episode. Yes, okay, sir. This was a second episode. So, um, uh, and uh, maybe we can ask whether that was the case uh, from the bystander. In the video, I don't know to what extent it was clear on the, when it was transmitted on the internet. Okay. It didn't look like uh, there was something that gave way there. Of course, CCTV cameras has their own uh, this thing. But in view of that, the person had one more fall also similarly when when this was not like this. Possibly in this case, it was not something giving way. So we will, uh, of course, that is environmental thing is, is an important thing that we need to consider in falls. That is a high thing that we need to keep in mind. In fact, in the, my presentation also, I told environmental cause is one important thing that we need to. Yes, sir. So your approach would be in this particular patient, because, so if there was a Dr. Shiram, if I understand you correctly, if there was a loss of consciousness, then you would go for a cardiac evaluation. In this patient, there doesn't seem to be loss of consciousness, at least from the video. And yes. therefore, you wouldn't want cardiac evaluation as a okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cardiac evaluation as the first, uh, first uh, cause. Yes, yes, so yes. you would go for some other evaluation. So yes. can you just enumerate like if you are uh, you you you've seen this video, what will go on on your notes? What is the notes that you are going to write for this particular patient after seeing this video and with this this thing? Next thing. So this. Uh, I want this, to understand your thought process. How would you you go about it? So in the notes, be, in the sense, what investigation? First investigation you would order, or what first consultation you would order, or what would what discussion you would write in your notes? Uh, the thing is that we'll uh, record it as uh, spontaneous episodic falls. So since the okay, you will call you will record it as spontaneous and it, okay falls okay fall spontaneous episode, and okay. episodic. So yeah, it's more like a drop attacks, uh, just drop attacks. So it is more like you would you would probably write the word drop attacks in the file. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that will be the first uh, then, and then uh, actually uh, 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 the possibility that definitely we will uh, we will consider a neurological opinion. Definitely we will consider a neurological opinion. Okay. You will consider uh, a neurological opinion with specific things in mind. Okay. What yeah, were yeah. those things? One you told was N because you seen the NPH people also falling. Yeah, yeah. Is that right, sir? So, yeah, okay. yeah. So initially, yeah. when we take the history, uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, consider that possibilities like uh, uh, like uh, uh, NPH, like uh, that would be the memory uh, problem can be there. Then the urinary retention, uh, then uh, ataxic uh, at a gait and or this can happen. Mm -hmm. So that part okay. we'll usually uh, rule out. And uh, then okay. uh, you would want to rule out as a uh, one thing you would want to rule out is. You would want to rule out any gate up concomitant yeah, yeah. gate disorders. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, fine. Yeah. Yes, yes. So yes. that that values uh, both things. The, like uh, uh, this, uh, pro, this uh, degenerative diseases like uh, brainstem okay. cerebellar uh, cerebellar degenerative disease, like uh, progressive supranuclear midbrain defect, and all these. Uh, these all uh, will have some neurological deficits as well. Mm -hmm. So that part we'll uh, evaluate first. Uh, if, if it was a syncope, as you said, definitely we'll first consider the cardiac possibility. Since it is not okay. uh, favoring the syncope, definitely we will consider the neurological possibilities first. 
okay for new, neurological possibilities first now if I, if I, you if you have to put your money on one diagnosis without any further investigation what is that diagnosis you are going to put this patient on uh the thing is that uh, uh the, the, the both are possibilities actually the, the as per the video there is a strong possibility of cataplexy but vestibular paroxysm also is a strong possibility but uh, we okay. usually uh, we usually consider if there is multiple events like uh, 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 multiple events uh, uh, then okay. usually uh, we will consider the vestibular paroxysm as a first possibility okay so Otherwise, you want uh, to consider yeah consider vestibular paroxysm as the first cause no maybe for me if you ask me i would not consider this as a cataplexy for the reason that this has been a pulsion in cataplexy it's more of a collapse it's more yeah. of the muscles not listening to them yeah. there is time for them to collapse and there is time yeah. for them to get up though the textbook descriptions what we write is sudden sudden they tell what yeah. used to be sudden what 10 seconds used to be actually sudden in the in the ester years the present day with cctv cameras that 10 seconds is a huge amount of time in yeah. that huge amount in that 10 seconds we see the patient actually collapsing with the neck muscle not moving neck neck not listening to them as if they are struggling to try to make them listen to them but they are not listening to them yeah. they actually buckle the knees buckle when the cataplexy people actually come with abrasions the abrasions are actually on the knees because the knees buckle and they touch usually they, uh, the they, they they will actually falls or they will actually buckle down. Down. okay yes. okay so they, the abrasions they more on the knee rather than actually being pulsed or pushed to one particular yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, side yeah. so maybe paroxysmia is is a condition okay in my own practice i have seen paroxysmia causing this kind of falls on on more than uh, i think a few occasions okay but the most important thing here is like or the different thing is why does it happen after waking up is it a sleep disorder is um, and uh, and one more thing is like i would request if there is a, a neurologist who is there in the uh, among the, uh, the um, delegates who have joined us if you want to unmute yourself and contribute we don't mind okay please do uh, contribute we uh, we we'd be more than glad to listen to you also is there somebody who would want to give an opinion do you have a neurologist who has joined today now yes yes sir oh no ratadre yes sir yes 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 sir good evening sir i good actually evening, I, sir. yeah i joined little late but i no saw the problem. video yeah a couple okay. of times the interesting presentation you know uh, as a neurologist when i see such cases first and foremost you know after uh, clinically ruling out cardiac causes because this sudden because this history i was not aware that uh, all the episodes are uh, she is getting after waking up in the morning or maybe waking up from the sleep but definitely after the cardiac investigation basic investigation i would definitely consider looking at the age uh my impression will go to a cryptogenic falls in a uh, in a middle aged ladies cryptogenic falls cryptogenic yeah. falls that that's cryptogenic. how i know that's how yeah. we consider of course this this is not a diagnosis yeah. to start with but this is a diagnosis of exclusion okay. when we get her you know uh, mri brain done to rule out any structural lesions as you mentioned in the yeah. third ventricular collapse system and other things mm-hmm. apart yeah. from that eeg also needs to be ruled out you know you know mm-hmm. a typical seizure episodes after cardiac evaluation then if every these these things are normal then maybe i would consider more of a cryptogenic falls um yes. yeah that, that is how i would uh, uh, work it up and uh, if just correct me if i'm wrong cryptogenic falls also are can be so severe that they can actually come with fractures yes yes they can come with fractures they are usually with the middle aged ladies and i think this lady is around uh, around same age mid ar- ar- around 40 yeah, years around 40 yes. 50 many times you know as you mentioned you know these abrasions in the knee are very common with yeah. cryptogenic falls so that okay. is another uh, another uh, thing which i would consider you know this most likely uh, diagnosis till now but you know i think looking yes, at sir. this differential diagnosis um, this this more like more of a pulsive fall which uh, you mentioned okay. you know, that that uh, i requires a little different approach as you as you yes. told these cryptogenic falls also are more of a, they are not a classical a uh, pulsive falls they are usually like a collapse like how you see with a cataplexy yeah. you know they okay. they slowly okay. go down and most of the injuries are on the knee on the knee yes cryptogenic yeah, yeah. falls are on the knee okay mm-hmm. so now uh, then of, of course uh, one more drop attacks as a, there is one paper that as well as i was going through this thing where drop attacks itself as a mani- as, as a fo- 
functional neurological disorder there is a study that has been done and where they see these people they have studied the situational thing and all these things the first episode has always been because of a recognized organic cause for fall like it would have been a syncope because of a painful episode syncope because of uh, they were dehydrated syncope because of something else and then after that they start having this kind of daba daba again and again again and again falls that this becomes a uh, a pattern for them so this kind of a thing has been noticed so now my question to you is wh- how do you, what is the difference as a neurologist what is the difference between cryptogenic falls when you call it and when do you call it a psychogenic non epileptic seizure pnes like this yeah i think you know there is a very strong and history is a uh, history is the most important thing because the middle aged ladies they uh, coming with uh, and the frequency of cryptogenic fall is very very sparse you know they they will not come with a they will not come with you know recurrent falls they will come with one fall now maybe after a couple of months and then maybe after a couple of months so the frequency the duration between the cryptogenic falls is pretty pretty long as against okay. the non epileptic there will be some some sort of a, a stressors and the only thing what is going to help us here is the history and the, the flurry okay. of episodes you know the multiple episodes in the clustering of episodes would be little more in favor of a, a psychogenic non epileptic uh, attacks and there will be you know okay. the history and all those things will be more common the age age group also will going to help us more um, okay sir yeah sir now f- from your side i would want to ask okay i asked the same question to dr sriram so now when this patient is presented how will your prescription look like how will your notes look like this patient yeah as i told earlier uh, the mm-hmm. first would be definitely to get a baseline ecg then electroencephalography okay. yeah ecg mm-hmm. electroencephalography and if there is associated symptoms like sweating and other things maybe i would err on the side of getting a holter monitoring done you just to rule out a cardiac uh, cardiac uh, cardiac thing and um, okay. another thing would be to get an imaging done as a neurologist imaging and eeg would be definitely high in the list and uh, mm-hmm. if all these are normal then maybe uh, maybe i would uh, stop here and think about cryptogenic falls or maybe go for a uh, vestibular investigations yes sir sir one yeah. more question if yeah. at all it was a brain stem tia how yeah. would the presentation be a yeah, brain stem tia fall will have an associated symptoms um mm-hmm. like you know dysarthria diplopia uh, some sort of a sense of you know vertiginous feeling or giddiness uh, all mm-hmm. those things would be little diplopia sometimes difficulty in swallowing all those isolated falls um with a brain stem ischemia is not very common they will have uh, definitely mm-hmm. have a risk factor the age group would be different mm-hmm. and mr and mr angio would give us some idea about the basilar vessel mm. and the history okay. history wise associated other symptoms will be definitely be helpful to us associated symptoms okay. and um, yeah um that's how i think um, the ischemic so symptoms one more question i have is yeah. if okay the one clinical guide that i have been using is if somebody is found fallen found fallen means they could not get up on their own 5 yeah. minutes later somebody had to went there and they saw it, that person fallen okay in a middle aged or elderly person maybe goes more in favor of a brain event and uh, spontaneous waking up goes more in favor of uh, pnes cataplexy these kind of things is that a yeah. good clinical uh, way of uh, thinking yeah i think so sir i think um, yes it, it it holds true sir it holds true it holds thank you sir yeah. okay now i think we also have dr dhanya here she also sees a lot of uh, false uh, patients dr dhanya would you want to add something i think she has muted herself or sir can i speak sir i am dr venkatesh neurologist from uh, mumbai sir please 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 this is a open forum now me and uh, dr shriram are more and dr ravi rajan are more than happy to listen to all of your opinions yeah, what yeah, do you yeah. say dr shriram uh, yeah, sir i am doctor- fine fine I am Dr. Yes. Venkatesh Sir. I am from KDH Kogila Ben. I am a stroke fellow yes, here. So we yes, uh, routinely, I mean, in the last uh, maybe in the last two three months, we have noticed the similar case of sudden unexplained falls. So mm-hmm. uh, like uh, five cases we have seen. Uh, many of the times there are there uh, post COVID patients, and they, their mm-hmm. only complaint was sudden unexplained fall with complete preservation of consciousness. So in mm-hmm. two patients, uh, there are two patients are epileptic patients. so we thought we we our initial diagnosis was drop attack versus pnes because many many mm-hmm. times uh, in epileptic patients we see pnes also like uh, sir, patients who are one minute just for the just so that everybody understands what is pnes i just expand 
PNES is psychogenic non-epileptic yeah, yeah, yeah. seizure. Okay. Yes, sir. Please carry on. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, as the as, as we have already, I mean, there was a literature also in epileptic patients. Also, we can see sometimes PNES events. So, but uh, this uh, this unexplained falls. So, usually our approach was like uh, initially we do. Uh, I mean, initial diagnosis. Uh, if the attendant was there, uh, I mean, if, if we first rule out whether it's a syncopal episodes, pre syncopal pre syncopal episodes, or completely if there is a loss of consciousness, we try to think more in in lines of seizure. If the patient has got loss of consciousness also during a fall, uh, an elderly patient, if it is like we thought more of some arrhythmia, so our our approach was initially we get uh, once the patient come to the OPD. So if the patient was uh, able to wants to admit. If they don't want to admit, also we directly send the patient to the EEG. We just want to rule out okay. whether is the, it's an epileptic event or not. So apart from that, we do the baseline incision halter monitoring, sir. So out of five cases, okay. like uh, one case, we notice that halter monitoring in the initial 24 for, we do initially for 24 to 48 hours. If the patient, okay. we, if if we don't see, uh, if we don't, uh, I mean, if we don't find any event, sometimes we even. Like last time we have done even for the seven days, we do seven days halter mm -hmm. monitoring also. Mm -hmm. So, so they, we have picked like one or two events. Uh, I mean, arrhythmic events are there. So we have sent the patient for the cardiology opinion. So whether it's like, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, whether it's arrhythmia, which is causing this and if we further needs any investigation, usually a uh, halter monitoring, like we have advice for every patient of uh, uh, drop attack. If you don't find any cause, I mean, the, the, as a neurologist, we initially do the brain imaging and the EEG to rule out. But sometimes what we found was uh, this PNE, this spontaneous drop attacks or PNS, PNS events, they initially have three to four attacks. And after that, uh, most of the patients, we didn't find any attack. I mean, they subside spontaneously also, like maybe my experience was little, but I found uh, they are, they are spontaneously if we didn't find any cause, but we didn't, I mean, we didn't in investigate much regarding in lines of vestibular causes, sir. We didn't evaluate uh, much about, I mean, in lines of vestibular uh, evaluation, we didn't do much. But we learned something very nice that you are doing. That is the seven day holder. Yes, so yes, sir. I, uh, I think uh, actually uh, we have something called web cardio monitor, right? Web cardio monitor, which can be uh, used for seven day monitoring. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Okay. yes. So I, I mean, when initially, we, is triggered, it automatically stores that particular data. Yeah, yeah the entire entire data is stored. So it is uh, it is stored for at least uh, the halter monitoring. Uh, usually, it is done for uh, one or two days for twenty four to forty eight hours. Mm -hmm. So in web card monitor, it is much easier, and it can be the entire data can be stored and uh, uh, for seven days. Uh, that's it. that's what I wow no okay. So that, that that is a good uh, good thing because all even I was not aware of seven day holders continuously. So usually we advise for the twenty four hours only, sir. First initially, yeah. And okay. uh, if the patient with strong sus strong suspicion is there, and if the, we didn't find any cause, we suggest okay. them for the twenty four hours to forty eight hours, or sometimes even strong suspicion is there, seven day holter monitoring. Yeah. Okay, so that that's a wonderful option that we we would want because a lot of time when we are actually suspecting. Uh, cardiac cause from the history. Unlike this patient, we are other patients where actually we are yes. suspecting it is cardiac, but then we holder turns uh, comes uh, negative, and in which case we are at a loss. So I think this is news for a lot of us to do a seven day holder and wait for that. And one more thing is when the, during that uh, holter epi period, if that fall or drop attack has not happened, that period of holter is waste. So we'll have to repeat it. Is that right? Uh, actually, we had a patient, uh, a patient uh, uh, working in, uh, I think, UAE or uh, he was working in a factory and all. So, the, likewise, okay. the, the previous video, there was CCTV. And uh, while working, uh, the, you can see the video that he, he just uh, falls down. Uh, there is a, a mm -hmm. transmit a period of loss of consciousness. It was a clear-cut case of Cinco. So, whenever he uh, mm -hmm. uh, he go, goes to the cardiologist, the ECG will be done. Everything is right. It is, no, it is usually normal. So to this mm -hmm. one, uh, uh, this web cardio monitor, which uh, monitored for uh, one week, uh, can uh, could pick up this uh, arrhythmia picture. So that's how it was. That's why we also know, know about it. And uh, and there is another thing called drug induced. I think uh, some drug uh, induced uh, 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 this can also uh, provoke this uh, arrhythmia like features. Okay. The the electrophysiologists usually do this. Okay. okay. Uh, Dr. Dhanya was here. I don't know. I'm not able to see her. She had a recent patient with whom she had extensively evaluated with all these things. Okay. No problem. 
I think she has dropped. No problem. So um, I think this was a good uh, discussion. So when people with uh, that uh, continues to be a challenge, but we have some. Uh, um some guides okay and when we have nothing we still have uh, psychogenic non epileptic seizures and uh, cryptogenic uh, uh, falls as uh, as a um uh, cryptogenic sir? falls as one of the uh, uh, diagnosis now the, i think uh, none of these things is actually uh, complete unless if this patient all investigation turn out to be normal how are you going to end this consultation like Dr. Shiram, what are you going to give to this patient if everything else turns out to be normal? Is there a drug you are going to give? Are you going Def to send the patient to a cognitive behavioral uh, Definitely, if, the, if everything goes normal, uh, huh? I would definitely try a, a anticonvulsant, like uh, 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 to consider the vestibular paroxysmia and start uh, with this uh, group, carbocipine group. Uh, uh, okay. uh, most often, we do give lacosamide, which is having a better co patient compliance. Okay. So we'll start with lacosamide okay. and see uh, how the response. The only problem is that uh, when we consider the vestibular paroxysmia in some patient, it, the 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 mm -hmm. events are uh, so infrequent, then it's very difficult to monitor. If the patient is having okay. very frequent attacks, it is very easy to monitor. So we can see the uh, okay. drastic change. Yeah. That's the only uh, time which we are uh, 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 in a dialogue. So this patient from your side is going to end up with a lacosamide prescription. If everything turns out if to be if normal. everything turns out to be normal, yes, sir. Okay, sir, Dr. I, want Dr. I want to share a small uh, detail, sir, regarding lacosamide. So recently, yeah. in the last maybe in the last six months to one year, uh, we have noticed uh, two uh, lacosamide-induced bradycardia to such an extent yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, needing a pacing also. So actually, okay. last yeah. two months before we had one patient, uh, actually status patient on lacosamide, he developed a. a a bradycardia to such an extent need pacing also. So after that, actually we started oh, okay. uh, less use of less use of lacosamide. Now we have got better drugs like I mean levetiracetam and breviracetam. Those are like uh, better drugs. Okay. I mean con con controlling the generalized seizures. Levetiracetam we use now. And regarding what you asked, sir, regarding these patients. So many of these patients we use. Uh, there are many supplements. I mean coenzyme uh, coq and I mean coenzyme A supplements and all. I don't know. Sometimes these yeah. patients all will be helpful. And regarding the EEG, sir, like uh, sometimes what happens is even though we thought of PNES and uh, if the suspicion was more, at least we have to do the four EEGs to get the maximum yield. So initial EEG yeah. may, even though it is normal, the yield may be only 50%. So after the second, third, uh, in the, and then as per the literature, we have to do at least four serial EEGs if the suspicion of yeah. epilepsy, epileptic attack was there. Sometimes the temporal lobe seizures and all, uh, they may just uh, just have a brief episode of unconsciousness and there may be, there may be fall. So even though MRI okay. may be normal, so that uh, the pickup rate was maybe less based on the MRI imaging and EEG also might be low. So we have to do the serial EEGs at least you have to do, uh, three to four EEGs. I mean, maximum they say four EEGs to find exactly whether it's an epileptic, I mean, to route whether it's not an epilepsy because we should not miss an epilepsy. Okay. So, you, the you, so you don't rule out epilepsy on one EEG. Yeah, no, sir. One EG, EG may be normal on the, if the patient has got a seizure semiology, EG may be normal on the first time. EG is okay. normal only in 50% of the times. I mean, 50% of the times okay. it, is, it shows the epileptic abnormality. So you have to repeat maybe after three okay. months, again after six months, at least to get 100% yield, you have to do at least four EGs. No, these four EGs to, to, to not miss a... Epileptic event. Epileptic, epileptic event. event. It, is, it is not to... It is yes, not to sir, maybe false positives. It is to prevent false negatives. Is that right? Sir, it is to find out whether the falls as a cause of epilepsy. If you okay, fall as a cause of epilepsy. Fall, fall as a cause of epileptic event. Yes, sir. So you will need four four serial EEGs. Four serial EEGs. Yes, sir. And that okay. will be a, and that even, will even if one of them EEG. shows epileptic activity, you will consider it as epilepsy. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, fine. So I, I understood that clearly. So I think Dr. Datta wanted to say something. Yeah, I, I think, you know, such situations, uh, video EG is, uh, the yield is quite uh, significant. You know, we have to okay. uh, admit the patient and get a video EG then for a day or maybe a couple of days. And if the patient, fortunately, if, if we are fortunate, if the patient gets an episode, that's it. Mm -hmm. Then you will really give okay. us an idea. Yes, dealing yes. With the, and the second uh, thing I, is... I, I, yes. Yeah. yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. And, second thing. Yeah. yeah, and second thing I would, I would in, in, in this case... 
after you know everything is ruled out you know your mri is not normal and if all the investigation cardiac workup is negative here we what we do is a 7 to 2 hour holter uh, monitoring uh, web cardio as doctor was mentioning web cardio and many times we have picked up the cause yes. of falls and the uh, as a cardiac arrhythmias so in these situations mm. every investigation mm. is i would definitely uh, get a complete vestibular examination done and, and that doesn't give me any idea then maybe i would err on the side of putting her on a group of drugs carbamazepin group of drugs would which would help us if everything is normal and the oh, vestibular okay. so gives me absolutely mm. no clue in maybe that will help me okay yes, of course like, okay. Is also- i think i'll go back yes sir yes sir so you would still put on after if everything turns out to be normal holter turns out to be normal serial eeg is normal video eeg is normal then you would go ahead and put the person on a carbamazepine yeah. now uh, i think yeah. i'll go back to dr ravi rajan and ask what he put the person on. sir you wanted to say something dr. yeah, yeah I, yes we need a complete vestibular examination before we put her on uh, carbamazepine absolutely 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 so what constitutes a complete vestibular examination again becomes a question of debate okay now uh, i would uh, i would like to ask the dr ravi rajan what did you start this patient and what has the, been the response so far so yes sir uh, i started her on uh, i mean based on her history and the investigations and the examination mm-hmm. i uh, we, we thought it might be migraine with weakness mm-hmm. so we put her on amitriptyline and uh, the patient came back last month in fact the patient was happy the patient didn't have any episodes in between and uh, we've, we've i've given her uh, the the continuation of the prescription same amitriptyline and nng okay so maybe 6 months if she doesn't get then we can probably think that amitriptyline is helping her is that right that is what i wanted to ask sir i mean till how long can okay. we continue I, I, i i have i have a patient who i put again after getting up from sleep she, she used to fall okay she you she came with the history she telling that somebody had given her an ssri okay after ssri she tells as long as i am taking this i don't get this problem but if i stop this again i start get this pro- getting this problem okay so i think there is a psychogenic etiology or something what uh, or Uh, related to migraine because again uh, ssris work very well for migraines too so she was put on that but for some reason she didn't want to continue the ssr she told can you give some other medicine other than medicine she didn't want to tell why she doesn't like that medicine whatever can you think anything else then i just sh- shifted her to amitriptyline and uh, so far uh, she seems to be go- doing well because i told if you have a fall again please let me know she has not told me so i think maybe amitriptyline also has a role okay so if if everything turns out to be normal okay here there is a vascular loop so again carbamazepine or lacosamide with all their side effects known i think we have an uh, option maybe the neurologists are more uh, co- confident in giving the carbamazepine the, maybe we f- from the ent side don't think that it is our drug or that we are eligible to prescribe the drug or whatever it is so we have an hesitation to start off we can always have a team of people like dr shiram who has a team there of a neurologist of a cardiologist of a psychologist everything so you have somebody in your team to take care or somebody to refer to with a good uh, understanding so that this kind of drugs can be given and uh, treatment uh, uh, started so any anybody else from the panel has anything to share please i see some comment uh, uh, i think uh, dr raj shekhar nursing has written a comment maybe you can unmute yourself and you can talk and in the meanwhile i think uh, dr dhanya has uh, been able to unmute herself she, if yes, she has sir. something to say yes, you sir. can uh, yes. sir uh, sometimes we feel that even after com- proper complete evaluation it is difficult to diagnose hmm. a fall recently had a case uh, had a cct had uh, an elderly male had vertigo followed by yes. a fall with loss of consciousness hmm. there was no post critical confusion complete cardiology evaluation hmm. was done ecg halt uh, carotid sinus massage ecg everything came normal and the neurological examination was completely normal then the even the ent evaluation full vng was done nothing could, we could not make anything specific so okay. that to think of some odd diagnosis like any any paroxysmal brain stem attack and all so i had put him on um, well provide for like a short short while at that time he was completely asymptomatic so don't know like the drug is working or it between the the time period between the episodes is it because it is long 
So like I have to follow him up and know what's happening. And another one, I had a uh, syncopial migraine recently. She very well responded to anti-migraine therapy. And uh, re- last week had a patient uh, giving the history of a cataplexic fall. So when I was going to history okay. detail, as you told uh, she was having a like strong psychological component was uh, like the previously i had seen um, one of your lectures telling the some events like some like some uh, difficulty in facing an event can uh, cre- lead to cataplexic falls she had some like yeah. uh, difficulty in her childhood and now like i mean um, yeah, yeah difficulty yeah, yeah. from her Absolutely. from the spouse so yeah. so i think yeah. like uh, like whenever she faces the difficulty she, she just falls down so like yeah, you, uh, emotional stimuli can 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 induce cataplexy i i think is it right dr shiram i think your voice is a little low hello yeah i think uh, occasionally the emotional stimuli can induce cataplexy if the if the patient is yeah can can stimuli. can induce this kind of uh, recurrent falls okay maybe we need a classification where exactly how to place where which one and all these things maybe with with more cctv videos coming up and what uh, drugs are going to benefit which kind of a video pattern will uh, help uh, us come to conclusions i think there were some more questions here dr anju must have asked a question is there any role for yes, a sleep sir. study yes, some question yeah is there uh, a sleep sir. role for uh, a sleep sir, good evening study? sir yeah. yes ma'am uh, sir good evening sir anju sir sir yes, i also had a question with uh, his hello uh, hello yes ma'am yes ma'am i i started getting a call oh. unfortunately yeah you can talk you can talk ma'am ha uh, okay okay similar history ah uh, here similar history of fall with uh, um, no loss of consciousness okay. and uh, the mri was showing vascular loose okay um, and uh, it was uh, short short spells of uh, fall Okay. and uh, then uh, i started on carbamazepine and uh, yes not come for review so far okay so similar not let us uh, maybe uh, what dr sira would tell you yeah absolutely maybe a year later we'll we will review <laughs> all these patients and then uh, we can, we can know the responses of each of those things i think dr santosh kulkarni also has tell there is a patient okay. this is what dr shiram was telling nph patients coming with falls dr santosh kulkarni says his mother had a similar falls with loc she was a diabetic with nph yeah the thing is that uh, nph uh, there can be retropulsion Mo- most often they present to uh, b- most often there there can be multiple symptoms there c- there could be a, a, a gait abnormality definitely then memory impairment oh. is a possibility then urinary retention this all uh, this all can happen yeah. it's uh, uh, so if, if if in such kind of patient if the, there is multiple faults then you should also consider nph as a possibility yes and and, and my course, and my advice and my advice for any fall actually it should be a team work uh, you should involve cardiologist and you should involve mm-hmm. neurologist uh, in your team that's that's yeah. better so it is always better that every vestibular practitioner is actually forms a triad there is a cardiologist there is a neurologist and there is a vestibular practitioner yeah. uh, all the three of them okay ent the, especially for the diagnosis of falls this falls. becomes yeah. a, a very 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 important this team work is very very important because otherwise what happens is we send for a cardiology evaluation but then our cardiologist sends for a ent evaluation so it it is like the the if if you are not working as a team probably you will not think in terms of doing a carotid sinus massage you would not probably think in terms of a tilt table test you would not probably think in terms of doing a holter again and again or a seven day holter the the holter that you are talking about serial eegs but if you are working as a team and all of us actually yes. are going towards actually making a diagnosis for that patient then all of us would make that attempt as a team all of us would make that uh, attempt and uh, then uh, be able to come to a a, a, a conclusion okay okay so i think already some some kinds of teams Sir, are forming you have a very nice team there dr datta is here he has a very good team with a neuro ophthalmologist it's a, it's a beautiful thing so all of us dr dhanya has actually started building a good team so i think all of us are uh, making that uh, uh, slow approaches towards building strong teams so that all these patients are best benefited i think dr datta has raised his hand yes sir yeah, i i have one uh, one um, um oh yeah. contribute one thing what i would like to highlight yes. is 
most of the times yeah. you know we uh, the importance of tilt table test is so much that it, it will give us mm-hmm. um, significant information that we are yeah. under ut- utilizing this importance of uh, the investigation yes. of tilt table test yes. one yes this one one point which i would have highlighted because many times we <coughs> have uh, syncope and orthostatic hypotension just by doing um, mm. tilt table test so especially a But person who is yeah. elderly patient coming with recurrent falls tilt table test has a tremendous value in uh, r- ruling out many differentials one second thing is um, if we consider some sort of a vestibular vestibular disease in this patient what could it be and what investigation would help us here okay so uh, see for if you ask me this question i think i'll have dr shriram also to answer this uh, question okay yeah. one thing is a, a high frequency head shaking test in vng okay lot of patients who come with tumarkins crisis when it, when it comes to vestibular falls vestibular falls are where falls there has been in the history there is a certain amount of force there are two contexts in which vestibular falls come one is there is certain amount of force that the patient feels because it is a it's a reflex it's a vestibulo spinal reflex to a false new false gravitational vertical the actual gravitational vertical runs like this the vestibular system is telling this is the gravitational vertical and there is a vestibulo spinal reflex trying to place the person to a false gravitational vertical number one point the second way in which this thing can come there is a spin that is coming patient thinks that they are going to fall and therefore they are they are these are most of them are near falls they actually don't fall they are near falls they, they just go and sit somewhere that they, they have time so these are two contexts in which vestibular comes so when there are when there is a vestibular there are four things that i consider one is vestibular migraine two is uh, um, uh, tumarkins uh, related to miniaris uh, disease then third is benign paroxysmal positional vertigo itself can cause very very yes. pulsive falls in some patients yes. okay and then vestibular paroxysm each of those things have findings on video nystagmography the vest- vestibular migraine of late we have started seeing some patterns like the saccadic vertical pursuit is a little consistent uh, pattern that we start seeing there is a subjective visual vertical test which we do where there is something called influenced by background with the background is rotating right they try to make errors towards the right if the background is rotating left they make the errors towards the left then we get small upbeating nystagmuses okay just upbeating nystagmus without anything else then there are sustained nystagmus in certain postures when the head goes to one particular posture at that time there is a constant nystagmus as long as that posture is maintained these are the things that happen in the vestibular migraine some of the findings in case of vestibular paroxysmia on hyperventilation you may start getting nystagmus or you may start getting eye oscillations okay like spring coil pattern is what we started calling it so that is the kind of thing that we see in benign paroxysmal positional vertigo if that is the cause then you do a positional test you will get it uh, as a, a as a, a positive okay in tumarkins related to miniaris this is one thing that has been little constant for me it, at least in the patients that i have been seeing is even if they don't have a spontaneous nystagmus on high frequency head shaking we started yes. we start getting a nystagmus these are the findings so uh, with these four tests will tell us something if if at all there is a vestibular cause you will you will get uh, something okay you can do the if you have if you have the, uh, the uh, access to vng then you can do them with vng but if you don't have access to vng just with a uh, recording with the mobile phone you can do the smooth pursuit under slow motion and then see whether the movement of the eyes is actually smooth or it is jerky and then uh, review and uh, see even the head, head shaking test all these things can be attempted even hyperventilation test can be attempted so that is what would constitute of course then if you have access to vamps then we can do vamps for miniaris disease uh the these things of course, caloric is more of the time i find it to be little more confusing rather than actually uh, contributing but then if you want to do you can actually go ahead and do so that is my uh, thing dr shriram what kind of uh, vestibular evaluation specific test that you look for in patients with uh, coming with a fall yeah you have already elaborated everything the thing is that uh, 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 to add uh, aged labyrinth aged labyrinth uh, means elderly group Uh, uh already having prostate vestibulopathy they may not present you as vertigo in uh, positional mm-hmm. vertigo this bppv so bppv yeah. in aged labyrinth can just present as faults uh when yes. when they try to get up uh, they get a retropulsion they can get get a fault that's a you that can be uh, a that's typical a presentation beautiful point. point that's a beautiful point yeah That's a so that is the, that's very yeah. that's very much uh, uh, it's uh, it's common with, uh, which is we have encountered 
then uh, as wow. i as as you told uh, can can i ask you something like uh, there is uh, there was a paper by ian kutto is stating that uh, okay. head shake uh, after head shake that what what we are doing routinely uh, doing uh, vibration induced nystagmus uh, uh, you can uh, you can uh, 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 get a result uh, equivalent to the after head shake but we Uh, in our practice uh, uh, we are we are do we are having a tuning fork uh, uh, carl stay carl stoes tuning fork with 128 hertz that steady stays 100 hertz vibration uh, on the master uh, with a vestibular hypofunction when there is a vestibular mismatch uh, for, uh, in uh, dark you can get this uh, uh, means uh, uh, nystagmus so it, yeah. it, it can be a substitute uh, to the uh, the uh, after head shake the thing is that uh, in some in some individuals like elderly group if the if they having a stiff neck and all uh, we might not be able to do the head shake uh, how how about your experience in in fact what uh, i just returned from a trip to the bucharest romania last month i was with a wonderful team of doctors called with uh, headed by dr oda okay dr yona yeah. uh, oda is the this, we all know her uh, she, yeah participates in the meetings okay yeah. so she has a beautiful she has a, there are a group of three vestibular clinics highly equipped vestibular clinics which they run in uh, romania okay so there when i saw them they use uh, vibration very very commonly very frequently they use vibration to elicit uh, vestibular yeah. asymmetry yeah 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 uh, they, they, the paper it says it is more it is equivalent or more sensitive uh, this uh, uh, means like a head shake but uh, okay. in our experience yeah. uh, uh, uh we, we we have a limited experience we have uh, recently started this uh, vibration induced uh, to uh, to look for okay. that uh, okay. but uh, the thing is that uh, uh, the, the i head shake uh, the the uh, which we have which after head shake this time is in some cases you can't get in uh, with vibration induced so that yeah. was the confusion uh, the uh, it's uh, it's other maybe it's maybe the what the vibrator that we use also should be strong enough uh, that that what? that will be the yeah. reason the thing is that you uh, it's not easily uh, uh, obtained when it's a 100 hertz vibrate that's what they recommend we have a carl stoes 128 hertz tuning fork that's all so but uh, it yeah. sustains that's a tuning fork that's uh, that that must be the reason for auditory stimulation yeah yeah that that that's must for be the reason why we are not getting so it it, it should yeah. be i yeah. think it should be a vibrator itself right absolutely absolutely i think it's a it, the, the, we get these things in the decathlon vibrators are there okay yeah 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 so those things actually work okay okay so fine, fine, so fine. i think this was a very nice uh, discussion dr ravi rajan where are you yes he is there sir, okay thank you thank you for bringing such a beautiful thank case you, sir. So one yeah, last question sir case? yes sir uh, sir considering only this case hmm. considering only this case uh, yeah. what might have been the trigger and what would you advise the patient to avoid i mean you told uh, the patient can avoid getting up immediately after i mean not to get up immediately Possibly. after sleep yes. to lie down in the bed for 15 minutes and then get up absolutely other than that absolutely. what can be the what could have been the trigger and what the patient can avoid i i see if you ask me this question probably that is one thing that i would suggest and uh, if you go by uh, uh, the papers that tell that this some of these falls are actually representative of functional neurological disorders maybe if it is coming again and again maybe we, we can consider cognitive behavioral therapy for this particular patient uh, but then other than that the, just uh, because it is not that frequent um, uh, your approach of giving amitriptyline and waiting and uh, seeing what happens may be the right approach okay okay sir yes sir anything else uh, Uh, to, Shiram, add, you want to, to, add uh, to add one thing as uh, data uh, was pointing out heart is a very valuable test in uh, this uh, any uh, any uh, condition with the falls when a patient come to you with a syncope or falls uh, heart means uh, head up tilt table test yeah, it's a very yes head up tilt head up tilt table test it's a very head up tilt test is a very valuable test actually it can differentiate between the four conditions like uh, uh, this uh, orthostatic syncope this uh, yes. pots uh, pots like uh, uh, or, or means uh, tachycardia syndrome and uh, this uh, dysautonomia and uh, 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 this neurally mediated syncope so heart can uh, okay. uh, differentiate between these four and uh, definitely if there is a strong possibility for pre syncope syncope uh, definitely you should do heart uh, which, uh, so and what is the 
sir what is the protocol that you follow for hut it is without drugs or you do one round without drugs and one initially, one round initially from... without with initially without drug and uh, uh, if uh, if uh, having a strong suspicion you can go with the drug okay okay great great so i think this uh, was a fruitful wonderful discussion thank you very much dr uh, ravirajan for bringing this case this gave opened the opportunity for discussing a lot of things so i thank, thank you very uh, much for dr. having me sir yes uh, dr ravi you wanted to say something so th thank you very much for having me sir not at all, not at all. thank you thank you thank you thank you for the case and uh, i thank uh, dr shriram for some reason our other panelist who is a sleep disorder specialist uh, uh, could not join uh, dr vishwanath bellad okay i think he would have added uh, value uh, and uh, i also request the two neurologists who uh, joined for the uh, discussion dr datta okay uh, so thank you thank you all uh, for uh, for for this uh, wonderful uh, uh, discussion and uh, uh, it, it's always a great uh, pleasure when a lot of uh, us come and start openly discussing here again as i say the principle here is without the fear of being judged okay without fe fear of being okay we just express our opinions okay and whatever and that is how when that fear of being judged is not there okay all our inner feelings actually come out and we tell better and we discuss better so with that we conclude one more uh, session of uh, vertigo uh, grand uh, rounds thank you all for your contribution thank you all for uh, uh, joining and uh, we look forward to uh, going on uh, discussing and i see some thanks messages dr anand kartikeyan thank you sir thank you very much so uh, dr moin